Hey, remember when I did that video on a Pacific Rim figure? <sighs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> I have Baby Robit. Welcome to technically part two of my two-part super duper mini series where I talk about Pacific Rim stuff and today we are talking about the NECA Gypsy Danger Anchorage Attack version. This figure was donated to this channel without my knowledge by the beautiful and oh so fantastically driven by maple leaf tree joke. Space Tree Studios. Thank you so much Will. I know you sent me that box ages ago and I am sorry that I forgot to actually record the video portion of the unboxing of that video because dang it was surely a box of treasures but anyway let's start talking about pacific robit jaeger gypsy Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, dear. All right, so right up front, I am just going to tell you all this now. This is going to be a really weird review just because there's so much about this figure that I love in terms of paint and detail, and there uh, is just like this one major thing with the figure that I really don't like, and that's honestly the articulation. Now to further explain that, I have NECA figures from obviously the Godzilla line and from the Alien line, and those figures, to me personally, feel like you're holding an above budget figure. When I'm holding Gypsy Danger over here, it feels like I'm holding a cheaper figure. Now, I don't know whether to attribute that to the likes of the material that NECA used or what, but this particular Pacific Rim figure just feels kinda <laughs> cheap. And to kind of bring the cheapness to a head, I was messing with this sometime during the first incarnation of this review's existence, and this happened. I wasn't even using it, I really wasn't doing anything, but the little loophole over here just snapped. I don't know how, I glued it back on, and it stayed there for the remainder of the original review, and it just popped off again. So I'm probably going to end up re-gluing this at the end of the review once this is done and I don't have to touch this figure again in such a way, but it's not only just the fact that mine formerly Williams is broken. It's the fact that there are complaints across the likes of Amazon and then some of the Pacific Rim line's quality control. I mean, a lot of people question NECA's quality control at this point in time. Personally, I think this figure is outfitted with some of the best detail and paint that I've seen thus yet. Some of the best. <laughs> Not the best. But something about this figure just doesn't feel like NECA. You know what I mean? Like, for example, I mean... It might just be this copy, but this is loose. This is really, really loose in the legs. Now, when it comes to Godzilla over here, yes, he's a hulking mass of NECA material, but the only thing loose, a little bit of the tail. Moving on over to the body, though, you really don't get much. Maybe a little bit over here. That's it. And when it comes to their alien stuff, I mean, this is only one of the two that I actually own, but when it comes to the alien stuff... Like the head bobs up and down and everything, but it just feels like a more solid figure. A much more solid figure than this. <laughs> now this very much so could just be me and it might just be this copy of this particular figure. There's actually quite a few things in the paint and detail category that actually improved from other figures from this line that I've seen reviews for prior. It's just, this does feel like the type of figure that can fall from a shelf and break. I mean, it didn't even fall and this broke. <laughs> but anyway, what you're looking at right now are just a few poses that I took of the figure on the little turntable and otherwise, while the toe was still glued to the foot. And yes, you do get a healthy amount of articulation with this thing, and you can get her into a bunch of different poses. But it's the ability to actually keep and maintain some of those poses. Now yes, that is entirely because of how this is made and how it looks. But there are many other Pacific Rim figures out there that can pull off a lot more than this figure could. But then again, they cost a lot more. Mm. But that's my opening monologue, nothing in rhyme. Let's just get right into articulation. Starting at the head over here, the head can move uh, back and forward to a very um, limiting degree. You can turn side to side with the head as well, but again, Gypsy Danger's kind of got a bit of a, like a turtleneck thing going on over here where it's really just being choked by everything around it. So really getting the head into a crazy pose isn't impossible, but it's also not that easy. But it's all right, it's all right. Not articulation, but the 
shoulder pad slash light area over here as <laughs> a uh, soft plastic so they are you know movable they don't really pose just wanted to let you all know on the fully functioning arm you can go all the way around you are going to get a ball joint at the shoulder pad up here you will be able to swivel up here as well be careful of this piece though because it does pop off and it does kind of launch itself you're going to get a decent bend at the elbow, nothing too crazy. And since this arm is replaceable, you will get a ball joint over here for the arm. It is uh, limited to a certain extent, but it's something. You will also get a swivel at the wrist, and the hand can come out. Moving on over to the stump. Over here, you can go all the way around, you can move out, and you can move in, and you can put this in any which way i like to keep it like this because i don't know i think it just looks cool that way <laughs> you are going to get a rather nice bend back over here you're not going to be able to do too much of a crunch over here just because you're going to have the big gaping cheerio hole but something that i personally like to do is get gypsy danger into a standing pose she can actually hold and give her a magnificent looking tilt like so looking like the arm is actually weighing the figure down it's not really much of a crazy feature i just enjoy making this look like an in trooper from metroid prime 2 echoes back to articulation you can kick forward and you can kick back very nice for a very beautiful split the legs do not spread out too far which eh, you'll get a lovely swivel at the thigh up here you will be getting a double bend at the knee however which is very very nice and you'll be getting a ball joint at the foot You'll also be getting a ball joint at the foot over here, which does offer up a little bit of a pivot, but really nothing that you can ultimately work with. And of course, you're going to have this magnificent toe bend, which will help getting Gypsy Danger into some cool poses. But all things considered, not mine. <laughs> As you saw, the toe. Yeah, the toe. Hmm. And that covers articulation. Maybe I was expecting too much. Maybe I'm being too hard on the figure, which is kind of ironic because I'm usually pretty lenient with figures. I don't know what it is, but for the most part, when it comes to posability and articulation on this thing, I guess I was expecting, I don't know, a little bit more or at least better quality. I know I'm not alone when it comes to the quality control for the Pacific Rim line, at least for the Jaegers. Again, it just feels cheap as compared to something else that NECA has done like Alien, or like Godzilla. I don't know, expectations, maybe? But let's now get to my favorite part of doing figure reviews, and that is talking about paint and detail, yes. Jeebus McDeebus, oh! The panel lining, the mechanical representation between the joints, the drips of melted cheddar cheese. <laughs> Everything on screen personally looks amazing to me. Heck, even the lights over here are near perfect circles. There's stripes, there's scratches, there's damaged detail. The figure looks so very nice from just about every angle. Every angle is a good angle for good old gypsy danger here. The paint is bright, noticeable, memorable in all of its hiding places. And all that lovely weathering and dry brushing on this gal just looks Oh, mwah, so good. The Cheerio hole here is a fantastic representation of the chest thruster Gypsy had in the flick. If anything, there might be a tad overbalance of the whitey yellow over here, but that's just a minor gripe on my end. The damaged stump over here looks pretty nice. It does give off the right feeling, but it also does just look like a bunch of steak fries dipped in cheddar cheese. Ugh. The dangling wire effect looks nice and further represents the loss of an arm rather well, but something that the stump does very well is open the side of Gypsy Danger up for a nice detail and paint look. The weathering and dry brushing is here too, and these little doodads are fully painted. Very nice. Gypsy's plasma caster is a real treat, even if the beam end kinda looks like a urinal patty. <laughs> the mechanical side of things looks totally solid, if anything, maybe a bit too gaudy and chunked up, but still fits in with the rest of the figure. And all this fantastic detail and paint is present all around the plasma caster, not just on one side. Wish I could say the same for the figure. <laughs> the shoulder pad and alternate arm overall do feature the same amount of weathering and markings, the shoulder pad featuring some very very nice detail, while the arm just kind of smoothens itself out. The majority of the arm is great, but the hand here kind of looks like a wrinkle. 
speckled blueberry from this angle, but turning it to either side really shows off the lovely level of detail added into it. Now, Gypsy may not be double cheeked up on a Friday, but she do got back. A lot of back. A oh. lot of mechanical doodads and hoosers to really beef her up and make her look battle-worn and properly championed. Just look at all this wondrous weathering. God, this figure looks used. But it's also super uneven. As we can see on this side over here and a little bit down there, those parts could have really used what the rest got. Out front over here, the detail really begins to speak something loud. Look at this. The detail and the paint goes so very well together, but then the weathering tapers off again! Jeez, what the hell, NECA? The scratches, the markings, the pistons, and other gearhead type stuff just looks so great here. Then you forgot to weather the inner thigh on one whole side. What the fuck? The lack of weathering continues on a freaking kneecap, bruh. What the f Never mind. Lovely weathering on the other portions of the legs and even the feet look great over here. Furthering along that used look. More mechanical goodness. Oh, these things, these, this, that, the third. It's all so nice. Gosh. Thankfully, at opposite angles, the feet both look pretty awesome. Weathered and brushed, few details here could have been smoothened over to a certain extent. But for the most part, these things that help our gal Gypsy stand up look pretty good. So at the end of the day, it's the cheap build quality and personally the almost lacking feeling of articulation that sink this figure for me. The missing weathering does kind of tick me off and it's a shame because I know, have seen, and own much better products from NECA. People seem to have experienced different sides to this mirror. Some perfect, others crumbling to pieces. I don't know, man. I like this figure, but I do feel I could have liked it a whole lot more. And looking at the kaiju from this line, I definitely feel like the Jaeger's got a bit of a stiff end, but again, it feels rather situational from buyer to buyer, and that, in and of itself, is an issue. Yeah, uh, uh, I guess. Uh... Yeah, getting this thing out of the box and actually looking at it and fiddling around with it for the first time, I thought, why the heck was the NECA Pacific Rim line so oddly received? This looks amazing, and it feels amazing to mess around with. And then you actually try standing it up and messing around with it, and it's like, oh, wow, that's not only very limiting, but also kind of... I can totally see why you wanted to get this out of your collection there, Will, or why you just weren't into it anymore. I will find a loving spot for her on one of my many, many shelves, but for the most part, I don't think I'm going to be tracking any more of the NECA Pacific Rim line down unless you lot want me to. Even that's a bit of a stretch. Anyway, I have been Shin Rob Jira. I do so hope you enjoyed the video today, everybody. Shin Rob Jira patrons, thank you all so much for becoming patrons of mine. If you want to become a patron, check the link in the description below. You can also check the rest of the links in the description below for social media and a link to my merch page. Other than that, I have nothing else to say, so comical ending now. Go team! <laughs>